doing today? My name is Stella Simon. I'm from Kenya and I'm a registered clinical nutritionist. First, I'd like to welcome you to my YouTube channel. In case you've not yet subscribed, please go ahead and do so. In today's video, I'll be sharing with you about nutrition assessment and body mass index. And starting from nutrition assessment, I would say nutrition assessment is the process of interpreting anthropometric, biochemical, clinical, and dietary data so that you can compute for the person's nutrition status. And what is nutrition status? Nutrition status is the state of the body as influenced by our weight and our diet. And when we talk about nutrition status, we have to, to first compute where you fall, on which category you fall under. And that is where assessment comes in. And when we are doing assessment, we have the four methods, which I've just mentioned. And I'll start with the first one. The first one is anthropometry. And when we talk about anthropometry, here we, we, we take the client height and height we take it in meters or you can take in centimeters and then you convert into meters. And then we take the client weight. Then, the, then, the, then we, we find the ratio or rather we compute for the ratio of the weight in kilograms. We divide it by the height in meters squared. And the, the, the value that we get is what determines under which category you fall under. That means that your nutrition status could be categorized as either it could be normal, you could be underweight, you could be overweight, or you could be obese. And for the first one, for the underweight, if, it's, if we get a value which is less than 18.5, kilograms per meter squared will say client A is underweight. If it falls between 18.5 to 24.9, we will say client A has a normal nutrition status. And if it falls between 25.0 to 29.5, we will say client A is overweight. And if it falls under a value above 30.0 kilograms per meter squared, we will say that client A is obese. So anytime that you visit a nutritionist and they tell you that you are underweight or you are overweight or you are obese, what they actually compute for is your body mass index. So that is the first method that is used. Then the second method, we have the biochemical assessment. And here, when we are talking about the biochemical assessment, it involves laboratory tests. For example, maybe I have a client and I want to check if this client is anemic or they have anemia. For this client, maybe I will be interested in checking their hemoglobin levels. And if their hemoglobin levels are low, maybe they are not, they don't, they are less than 11 grams per deciliter. I will say that this client is anemic. And then we have the third category, which is clinical assessment. And when we talk about clinical assessment, here we are checking out for the visible signs that can actually show that a certain client has a certain nutrition deficiency. For example, if maybe the client has, if, if the client is a baby and they have edema, it could be indicating that this client has protein energy malnutrition. Or another sign that I could check out for, maybe if, if, if the client has palma pala, that they, they are, their hands and their hands appear, their, the palm of their hands is appearing pale. I, will, I, I can use it to, to, to say that this client could be having anemia, though I'll still need to do the laboratory test to confirm it. Then the last, 
the last method of assessment is data reassessment. And for data reassessment, we, we, we are actually focusing on the client diet. And here we have two methods. It's, it's subcategorized into two. We have the 24-hour food recall, whereby I'll just ask the client to tell me what foods or drinks, everything that they have consumed within the past 24 hours. However, it is not, um, it's not, it's not quite reliable because maybe the, that specific day I had some nice meals. So you cannot actually use the, the, the one, you cannot use a one day meal to conclude that I'm feeding well or I'm observing the healthy diet. Then we have the food frequency questionnaire. Here is whereby I will ask the, the client to tell me whether they have been consuming certain foods and I would also be interested to know the frequency and to know the portion. So those are the four methods that we use to do the nutrition assessment so that we can find out the nutrition status of a client. So the next time you walk into a clinic or a hospital, please visit a nutritionist and tell them that you'd like to know your nutrition status. That The one that we have covered today is for adults and I'll do another video so that you can share nutrition assessment in children or infants because it's different for them and we also use different methods. So starting from today, please, be 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 interested to know what your nutrition status is and once you identify that maybe you are normal or you are underweight or you are overweight i'll also be doing more videos so that you can learn if i am underweight what am i supposed to do so that i can gain weight if i am overweight or if i am obese what am I supposed to do so that I can lose weight and lose weight in a healthy way? So that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I'm so grateful. And please, in case you have not yet subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Thank you so much.